I turned my sound down. There we go. Dennis turned his sound down, but I forgot to turn mine down. <laughs> so welcome everybody to the live stream. Sunday, five o'clock. It's five o'clock here where I live, which is in the uh, Philadelphia area. And uh, we want to say hi to Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Oh, you know what? I muted. <laughs> Hold on. I muted. There we are. I muted the wrong thing. Now, hi, Dennis. Hey, hi, Steve. How are you doing? Hi. Now? Hi, everybody. All right. Dennis is here to keep an eye on your on your questions because the, the chat goes by pretty pretty quickly on my phone and I don't always see all of your questions and we try to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, we also have Joe in the chat room who's helping us out um, by highlighting some questions. And just a reminder, uh, as you're in the chat room, everybody, if you see a question that you can answer, if someone asks a question about music that you know the answer to, feel free to answer their question. Remember to uh, just be nice to all your fellow uh, viewers in the chat room and remember not to spam our comments. Uh, don't uh, keep making the same question or request. You can ask your question a few times over the course of the chat if I don't see it, okay? So uh, right away I see Kennedy checking in. Mr. W uh, Kennedy says, Mr. Walton is your band teacher. Well, Kennedy, I saw your band teacher, Mr. Walton, Friday night. I went to see the show uh, at our high school. We did our high school musical this weekend. They did a show called The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And uh, Dennis, have you ever seen that show by any chance? I have. Yeah. Hunch I have. They just did it out in Chester Springs. Oh, wow. Okay. So they did it in Garnet Valley, uh, which is the high school I teach at. They did it this weekend. It was really fantastic. And Mr. Walton played trumpet in the, the pit orchestra. So that was a lot of fun. Hi, Anil. Welcome to our chat. Gonna say hi to a few people. Hi, Owen and Hazel and Carly and Vision Luke and Barry Player and Lucy and Reused Corruption and Wild Raves and the Purple Frog Gamer uh, and Pooley Mouse. Oh, okay, so Pooley Mouse is asking if I can play my soprano sax. I thought it'd be something kind of neat to show you my soprano sax today. Um, so I'm gonna ask you a, I'll play a song on soprano sax. So. Maybe give me a, a request of what you'd like to hear on soprano sax. But I'm also going to ask you a trivia question. Does anyone know uh, what saxophone what saxophone is exactly twice as long as the soprano saxophone? So there is a trivia question for you. Okay, so we are looking for a song to play on um, soprano sax. Let's see, some people are saying Old Town Road. So there's a little bit of that. Um, a lot of people want me to play Harry Potter. I've heard that before. I can probably get to that on, uh, on maybe flute. Let's see, Baby Shark. So I did a, um, a lesson on Baby Shark last week on clarinet. So I don't think anyone has gotten the answer yet for my, my uh, trivia question. Okay, Amazing Jenny. Amazing Jenny is not interesting. Congratulations, you got the right answer. Uh, it is tenor sax, and Pooley Mouse got the right answer too. Neil Rock's got the right answer. Wild Rave's got the right answer. Uh, soprano sax is exactly half the size of a tenor sax, okay? Uh, ZZ Twins also got the right answer, good job. So, um, Baby Shark, right? Pretty easy song, you only need to know four notes. I think on my clarinet video I did it in this key. Right, that's C, D, F, da 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 c d f da 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 c d f da 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 and then f f e oh francesco is here hello francesco asked for a song called my favorite things let's see right that's that's the song that uh john coltrane made famous on uh soprano sax um do 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 i forget what key it's in
something like that. I made a few mistakes there. Okay, so happy. Oh, reused corruption says happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Um, I'm gonna pull out uh, my flute because someone asked about flutter tonguing. And Dennis, while I'm getting to my flute for flutter tonguing question, is there anything you've seen uh, that's a, a good question to to jump into? Well, it, it, what gentleman is how many keys are there on the bass clarinet? Yeah, we asked that last, someone asked that last week, and I didn't do my homework. I didn't find out. Um, that is a good question. Maybe um, someone could Google that. Or if you have a bass clarinet, you can literally just play a chromatic scale and, and count them. Um, or if you uh, Google uh, bass clarinet fingering chart, you can count how many different notes there are on that fingering chart. So someone asked about flutter tonguing on the flute. So flutter tonguing is when we make this sound. There it is. Took me a minute to get it. So basically, you're going. Your 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 tongue is is kind of fluttering on the roof of your mouth. So it makes that really kind of interesting sound, and it's you're blowing your air, and you're I'm touching my tongue right behind my teeth, like at the roof of my mouth. And it's making that sound of, it's almost like you're rolling your R's if you are um, speaking a language that has a rolled R, like that. Okay. Uh, Wild Raves gives us an answer on the bass clarinet and says low, low C bass clarinets have 20 and more keys. That sounds about right. With all the sharps and flats, it's probably a few more than that. Uh, Mystical Melody is asking for the um, the melody of what's this song called? Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Um, we played that song a few weeks ago. I conducted a 5-6 uh, a honor band, and that's one of the songs we played. It was a lot of fun. Dennis, can you throw us a question? Yeah, um, someone was saying they have a weird buzzing in their clarinet. They was wondering if uh, it has to do with their embouchure or if there's you know, some other way to you know, change that. Okay. Um, he says he doesn't know if it's me or my embouchure. Yeah, so so if you've got a rattling sound on your clarinet, it might be that you, one of your screws is loose on your ligature. So I've got this kind of ligature, but it, a lot of beginners or younger players have a different kind of ligature. I'm trying to see if I have one sitting around. You know the ligature with the two screws on it? Um, anyway, if you have one of those ligatures, check to make sure that your screws are tightened and not too loose, because if they rattle, that could cause that sound. Um, what else could cause it? A loose screw somewhere on your clarinet, so maybe your band director could look at that. Other than that, just make sure you're doing proper embouchure, and hopefully that will help. Okay, so Eleanor Burdett is a beginner on flute and is struggling to make a sound. So Eleanor, check out my video on how to make a sound on the flute, but basically, really short version of that is a lot of folks, when they have trouble making a sound on the flute, it's because they're wasting too much air. So keep your lips closed and pretend like you're blowing air through the middle of your lips, starting with the sound of the letter P, like that. And that will conserve your air. If your lips are too open, you have a lot of trouble making a sound, okay? Okay, so Ava Glagowski is asking, how can you play the trumpet when your left arm is broken? Let's see, you play the trumpet with your right hand. I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of cast you have. 
uh, if you can, if your hand is free, if you can manage to hold up your trumpet, even though you have a cast, um, or um, that's a, that's a tricky one. Um, you can hold your trumpet. Let me grab my trumpet. So here's my trumpet. It has a pinky ring. You can hold it. And you could hold it with your right hand. That might get a little tiring. And once in a while, bring your arm up to support it. That's my best suggestion there. So, um, let's see. Logan Macy, how many keys are on the alto sax? And then, Dennis, I'm going to come to you after I answer this one. So, alto sax, yeah. let's count them. Ready? Chromatic scale is when you play every note. So, some folks have been asking for the alto sax. Here's my alto sax. <laughs> And the, this chromatic scale from the low B flat. So as I play the chromatic scale, I'm going to be counting in my head, and you can count along too. So we're going to start one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up. Ready? Let's see if you can count with me. Here we go. I think I counted to 33, um, somewhere around there. So that's the amount of notes on, a sa on an alto sax. So a few people have been asking me for Super Mario Brothers. Um, so let me do that. And then we'll go to another question from Dennis. So Super Mario Brothers, uh, Reused has been asking for um, uh, this song and someone else has asked for this. Uh, How's this go? Let me think. I always forget. That's it. Oh, that's pretty high. Let me start. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I need to practice one. <laughs> practice that one but there's a little bit of uh, Super Mario Brothers for you Dennis how about a question all right um, who has the melody on first suite in E flat March you know what um, I saw that Lath has been asking that yeah I'm gonna look this one up I'm gonna try to listen to it so this is the Holst the Holst first suite is a um, a really great piece of music and I think Lath is probably asking about the beginning. Da 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 da. Um, so let's see if I can get some sound on this. So I'm pretty sure it's tuba, definitely tuba and euphonium, I think, and I'm not sure if the bass clarinet has it as well. So it's it's the low instruments. Da, 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 da. It's tuba, euphonium, and I think maybe bass clarinet. Okay, um, let's see here. Joe is checking in here and says, we have someone watching, uh, Arash is in Iran and wants to hear Bumblebee on the clarinet. Okay. So I get Bumblebee gets uh, requested quite a bit, and I only really know the first part of it. You can play it too. It's you have to know your chromatic scale, and it goes chromatic like this. Let's see what key should I do it in? Maybe um. Let's go uh. So that's the beginning of it, uh, and in order to play it, you have to know your chromatic scale. It's all chromatic. So watch here. Like that. So there is the beginning of, uh, uh, what's that called? Bumblebee for a special request. Okay. Um, Dennis, how about another question? Yes. Someone's asking for a tip 
for going over the break on the clarinet. Okay. And we, you know, we get different ones about the break. Maybe you can talk about that. Yeah. You deal with it. So if you play clarinet, there is a spot on the clarinet called the break, which is when you get to the B flat right here. That's the highest note you can go on your lower range of your clarinet, your, your lower register, we call it. And then we have to do something, they, some people call it crossing the break. It's when you switch to going back down to your low notes, but you're adding now our register key. So. So the trick that I use for going over the break is we start working on uh, just hitting the register key. So play like a low note, like do like a low, let's say low A, okay? And play that as strong as you can. And then as you're holding that, you just simply tap the register key and try to get the high note out. And that gets you comfortable in the upper range. Then you really just have to work on going, the trickiest part is going from an A to a B right here. Some teachers also have a trick where you hold down your right hand fingers when you're playing your A, and then these fingers are already down, and then you just do this, A, B, A, B. It's a really good exercise for that. Okay, and so I think uh, Lathe was following up Oh, the third movement of the first suite. Well, let's see. Let me listen. So the third movement of this piece, it's so quiet on here. Let's see. That's the trumpet or the cornet, okay? That's a trumpet or, or otherwise known as a, in this uh, style of music in the older concert band, they, they used cornets. Okay, um, let's see here. Jacqueline, is that, or J, JLC Vids is asking for Somewhere Over the Rainbow on flute. Sure, I can do that. Let's do here. go. Um, I had another question come here. Lath asked about, uh, can I have my high school band play that Gustav Holst piece? You know, Lath, that's a great idea. I might do that because that's a really fun piece. And if we do play that piece, I will record it and uh, play it for you. Okay. So Eleanor really wants me to play Bohemian Rhapsody on alto sax. Um, I will, that's a long song. Um, so I don't know if I can play that for you right now, but that's something I could try to practice this week and do for you next time. Um, let's see. Dennis. Yes, somebody wanted to know if you could play My Shot from Hamilton on the clarinet. Oh, short answer is not right now because I don't know it, but I, I know the piece, I've heard it. Um, so uh, that's another one I can put on my request list, but I don't know how to do that right now. But that's a great show. Has anyone out there seen Hamilton? Rebecca, I think, is the one that requested that. There was another question that came through. Um, all right, Carly Norwood. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard was it to learn each different type of instrument? Um, so basically what a lot of people ask about that is which instrument is the hardest. Um, I think for me, piano was one of the harder ones to learn because you have to learn two hands. And also, uh, also oboe is tricky because it's, 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 uh, the double read is very tricky. Bassoon is a little, is, is probably high on that list because of the keys are, are, can be a little bit tricky to play. Um, okay. 
Calvilupsa really wants to know about F sharp on the flute. Um, that's easy, so I'll answer it real quick. Thumb, one, two, three, and your third finger on your right hand, okay? And then you also use your pinky, as with most of your notes, you use your pinky here. So, thumb, one, two, three, third finger, pinky, F sharp. Low and high, if you make your lips do high notes. Okay, so, Bohemian, so a couple people want Bohemian Rhapsody on, on alto sax. I could try to figure it out. Let's see. Uh, I think I'm still on the right track. Oh boy, I'm, I'm, I'm off key now. I got the beginning of it though. Um, I'd have to practice that one for you guys. That's, it's such a long involved song. So there's the beginning of it. <laughs> um, thank you, Mads. That was like a really short version of like just a few notes. Um, Abby Roman is saying, I am a uh, beginner French horn player who originally played flute. Can you give me tips? So, uh, the biggest thing uh, for playing French horn is finding your pitch. Because on the flute, if you put down the right fingers, you get the right note to come out. But on the French horn, it's really tricky because you put down the right fingers and there's three or four notes that can come out depending on if you have your lips set the right way. So my biggest thing for someone who's getting started on uh, French horn, get yourself a tuner. Um, I don't have a French horn with me, guys, or else I'd play it for you right now. Um, get a tuner that shows you what note you're playing. So there's a great tuning app that's free. It's called Bandmate, Bandmate Chromatic Tuner. And if you use that, it shows you what note you're playing. And then you can play, look at the tuner, and it tells you if you're on the right note that you're trying to get. That's my biggest tip for you. Um, there was another quick question I was going to answer here. Um... Someone really wants me to play Trump. Oh, Rebecca wants Hey Jude on the clarinet. I can do that. Let's see. It's one of my favorite songs, actually. You guys like the Beatles? Oh, you see my fingers. beginning part of that. Uh, Dennis, uh, another question. I'm going to get my trombone. Sure. People have been asking for a trombone. So let's have some requests of what I should play on trombone. And then Dennis, what should I, what question should I answer? Yeah. Somebody has said the teacher told them to use more mouthpiece and you use only a little. And so they were confused as to which way to go with this. More mouthpiece on which instrument did they say? Uh, I get, I don't think so. Well, they may have. So prob Maybe basically it's, it's either clarinet or, or saxophone. So, yeah. um, basically, uh, the amount of mouthpiece that you should take in, uh, on your teeth here, your teeth should be placed. Basically, if you look really close, if you take a piece of paper, uh, let me find a piece of paper. And if you place, uh, let me see here. Here we go. So a piece of paper and you place it in between the reed and the mouthpiece, right where the paper stops is the spot where the reed starts to come apart from the mouthpiece. That's about where your teeth should go. So if you don't have enough, it'll sound quiet and, and pinched. If you have too much, it squeaks or sounds squawky. So just find the right spot that way. Okay. so. Let's see, trombone. Some people have been asking for, oh, Bob R is asking for La Fiesta. 
that's a great song. I couldn't pull that one out just on the spot. I'd have to practice that one, but that's a great song. ZZ Twins, I know you've been asking me to, to uh, answer one of your questions. So ZZ Twins just requested Star Wars on trombone. That's an easy one, and I like to play easy songs on trombone, so I'm going to try it. Warming up my buzzing mouthpiece. So, Star Wars. So there's a little bit of Star Wars for you, just for ZZ and uh, other folks who wanted me to play trombone. Uh, Mads uh, has a comment here. I've been watching you for three years. You've really improved my playing on alto sax. I even got to do a Billie Jean saxophone solo at my school's 80s show. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome, Mads. Thank you for that nice little story. Uh, Crazy Trick, sh trick, sh uh, trick Shotter has been asking about circular breathing. So I can show you circular breathing on... Um, you guys pick the instrument. Should I do uh, clarinet, sax, trumpet, trombone, euphonium? What should I do circular breathing on? Let's see what kind of votes I get here. All right, a lot of people are saying sax. It is, circular breathing is the same concept on every instrument. So I'll show you on sax and I can show you on other instruments. Basically, all right, quick lesson on circular breathing. Take a breath and uh, actually fill your cheeks with air. And just keep your cheeks full with air. And then with your cheeks full of air, put your hand in front of your lips and push your air out of your cheeks and make the air hit your uh, hand like that. Then, at the same time you do that, you have to try to breathe in like this. Actually, with your cheeks full of air, try breathing in and out through your nose. You look kind of funny when you do that. So, we fill our cheeks with air, and when you blow your air out through your cheeks, you breathe in through your nose at the same time. And that's how we take a breath while we're playing. Check it out. So that's how we do that, and I can do it on any instrument. The only instrument you actually can't do it with is on a flute, because a flute, you, you, you need to have the seal of your, your mouth around the instrument to do that. So you can't circular breathe on the flute. Okay, so let's get a couple of quick questions here. Um, so I know Ultra Gaming really wants me to do Pink Panther on the French horn. Uh, you know, uh, Ultra Gaming, it's been a while since I've done um, a French horn video. So like I said, like I say in all of my chats, I get a lot of requests and um, it, it takes a long time to get all the requests done, but I do, if I get a request, uh, I do add it to my list, and it's been a while since I've done a French horn video, so I will definitely try to get a French horn video done soon. We are actually very close to the end of our live stream here, so um, what I'd like to do is give some shout outs, so um, if you'd like a shout out, just say hey. Um, I want to thank some of my viewers that are here every week. Uh, Francesco is over here. Mike Mike uh, Hamilton from Scotland is always here, and I appreciate that. Uh, some of our other friends, uh, I recognize you in the chat. Uh, oh, here they come. Ultra Gaming and Munchman and Hilkia and Rebecca and Katie Jewell. Hello. Trumi and Kurt. There's your shout-out, Kurt. Uh, Rebecca, I already shouted you out. <laughs> uh, Ultra Gaming, welcome. Aaliyah, I recognize you. You've been with us before. Nicole, um, let's see, Renisha and Andres and ZZ Twins and Official Brianna. So, guys, I want to thank you. My phone is giving me a low power message there. Um, we are actually really close to, to uh, closing up for this week. This week is Thanksgiving here in the United States, so I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate that here in the U.S. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, certainly. We're going to have uh, three days of school this week, and then we have off thir Thursday and Friday. That'll be a nice break. And coming back from Thanksgiving, next live stream, 
Um, BK uh, is BK. Have you been asking me about clarinet fingerings? I have some videos on clarinet fingerings, so check my channel for clarinet notes. Okay. Um, Katie Jewell is asking me when do I live stream. I am here every uh, Sunday, and we usually go at 5 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time, which is where I am uh, on the Eastern United States. So Sundays, and starting this Sunday, we're going to start getting into some Christmas music, some sounds of the season. I have some holiday duets uh, that are on my channel that you can practice and get ready to play some songs for your families this holiday season. So I do encourage you to check those out. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving uh, to uh, Joe and Terry in the chat and to Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Uh, happy Have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Uh, so I wish you all a great week. Uh, remember to keep practicing, and I hope to see you next time at our live stream. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Until next time, I'll try to answer all your questions. Uh, in next week's chat. Okay, bye-bye.